Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle and this little guy is Tater Tot. He's our nine month old citrus bearded dragon and it is bath time. Bath soaking time. Are you ready, Tot? Are you ready? Look at him. He's so cute. So it's important for bearded dragons to get soaking time. Um, most literature says for bearded dragons that they should be uh, given a bath and a chance to soak about two to three times a week. If your bearded dragon doesn't like soaking or being in the bathtub and it bothers them, then maybe once a week. But Todd actually likes it. He's getting used to it. Like I said, oh, you're gonna have to let go of my shirt, buddy. He likes it. Um, it's a great time for him to get hydrated. I like to use this here, this little Tupperware. I'll back up so you can see. I was giving him a bath in our kitchen sink or our bathtub. And he's just too big now to bathe him in that because he can jump out of it. And I have successfully put Moose, the GSP outside because he would love to get a hold of Tater Tot because he's just a predatory guy. So I have to make sure that he is out of the picture when we are going to be handling Tater Tot, letting him out of his cage, um, giving him a bath, letting him play outside on the hardwood floor. And then later, it is a sunny day. I live in Houston, Texas. We're in the end of March now. And it is, look at that, 80 degrees outside. And it's only 12. So it's going to be a hot day today. And it looks like our cold weather is pretty much out of the picture. But, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna give him a little soak real quick. This is just gonna be a short video to help you understand how to do that if you don't know. So do it two to three times a week so that they can get hydrated. So I'm just gonna turn it this way and I get it real close. I turn on, you wanna make sure the water is about 85 to 92 degrees. You don't want it to be too hot or too cold. Now when I put this water in there. Um, if you feel uncomfortable, you can get a measuring laser temperature gauge, but I pretty much just fill it out. I feel comfortable filling it out with uh, my hand by itself because I've had beer dragons for several years. And so I can tell right now it's the good temperature. And so just to not freak out tater tot, I don't like it to go too much of a stream. I like it to kind of dribble in there at first so he can get comfortable and relaxed. And so you might have a different setup than me. This is kind of my setup where I just let it kind of drip in there. And he gets relaxed. Sometimes if you're a bitter dragon, if you haven't noticed your bitter dragon, use the restroom and I mean poop. Uh, Sometimes they can get impacted, which is not a good thing. If they eat, for example, example they're, supposed they're supposed to eat insects, and we sell dubia, and pretty soon we're going to be putting on our website mealworms and superworms. We're just in the middle of breeding them right now, and we don't have any available, but we will soon. So if you're seeing this at a later time, we probably do have them available. So just go ahead and go to our website if you need to buy them. It's www mighty dubia feeders.com i'll put a link below too look at him he's he is a little stressed out right now it seems how you know if they're stressed out is a lot of times that that surfing that he was just doing is kind of a sign of that and like i said he's still just getting really used to uh being in a new in this new container so sometimes they'll have the bottom of their beard turn. You're okay, you're okay, Tot. Down here will turn black. And um, that's a sign, his is not. So he's probably just goofing around. And I will pick up his bottom here. And let's look at underneath. These would be stress lines down here, which he doesn't really have too many of those. But when they get stressed, they have those little black lines. And so I think he's just getting used to this container. I don't feel like he feels scared or anything like that. 
So the water feels good. I like to fill it up to about this portion of his belly, about right here. So we're getting already close to there. He may or may not use the restroom in here. And it's, to me, I actually think it's so much more simpler than when he goes to the bathroom in his um, terrarium because I have to actually pick that up and clean it up. But if he just goes in here, I simply just dump it out in my toilet real quick, holding him, of course, and then make a fresh one if he does it right away and, and get that soaking. You want to soak them for about... 10 to 20 minutes. I usually aim for about 15 minutes and I just set my timer and let him soak. They sometimes lap up the water, but they're just in here. Now they get their hydration also from greens. You should be feeding your bearded dragon every day some fresh greens like collard greens, mustard greens. Don't do kale, don't do spinach. Um, those are not proper for bearded dragons, but you can do, uh, he likes collard greens, mustard greens. He loves carrots, so I give him some carrots. Every now and then, um, sometimes I'll give him a blueberry. He gets diarrhea though, <laughs> whenever we give him a blueberry. So that is like a very special treat here and there. Just kind of like maybe during his floor time where he gets, where to, he run gets to run around and get a little exercise. I'll have him chasing Dubia on the hardwood floor and some blueberries. Um, he also likes blueberries and raspberries sometimes. But his main diet um, consists of mainly bugs. So he likes millworms, right? You like millworms. And he likes superworms. About once a week he gets one or two of those because those are higher in fat content. And so you don't want to give them as a main staple. You want to give Dubia as a main staple. You want to give bearded dragons a, a year and under about 15 to 20 bugs a day and you would preferably like to split that up if you are available and you can um, into two meals so i do an a.m meal and a late afternoon early evening meal like a few hours before his light would go out his lights so yeah i usually try to give him about maybe about five to six uh, medium-sized dubia and then i might give him like four or five millworms and I dust all of those. I also black use black flies, 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 which you do not have to dust because they are extremely high in calcium. So, but just, just everything, everything else. And he does get a lot of his hydration from his greens. So I'm just gonna let him soak in here in a little bit and then I'll come back and pick you guys up and we're gonna go outside and let him get some sun. Okay, if it's a nice day in your area and you feel comfortable because it's warm out and the weather is decent, it's a good idea even if it's kind of indirect sunlight on a cloudy day, but I prefer super sunny day, but even so, bearded dragons need to they can soak out here in water for about 15 to 20 minutes. As long as you check the skies. I live out here, um, kind of in the country in Texas, and I spot big birds up here in the sky all the time. We have a lot of hawks here. We have a garden right over here, and there's a lot of little, little friends that come. And so we have a lot of birds out here and wild animals. And so I wanna make sure that I never leave Tater Tot out here by himself. I'm always just standing here or sitting here by him. Let him soak for about five more minutes with the sun on him. And then I'll take him out and I will even just use this uh, to put him out just to be in the sun with no water in it. If he's, you know, doesn't need a bath or I just walk around with Tater Tot is it nice, Tater? Huh? Is it nice? Do you like it? I'll just come in here and just, let's see. Um, let them enjoy the, the warmth of the sun because they need, um, you know, they need all their lamps inside, but it's really important for them to get some natural sunlight because they need vitamin D. And in the wild, they are gonna be um, basking in the sun 
and on rocks and things like that because obviously they are reptiles and that's what they do. So you want to give them plenty of opportunities when the weather is good to go ahead and do that. So it is a breezy day out here. It's very warm, not too hot, um, and it's just perfect. It's a perfect day for him to be outside. But yeah, this is what I just do. I just let him soak, let him get some, some um, energy re-energized by the sun. So I am going to mention this, that one sign that you're, or some signs that your bearded dragon does not feel comfortable and feels a little stressed. Of course, the number one sign is um, their beards will start turning black. Now, I have never seen Tater Tot be that upset where his beard turns black, but when he goes out in the sun, he does turn a little bit darker in color. But another one of stress signs are these little marks right here. Um, that they can get to but i have noticed and look at his tail when normally all of this is very pale white or cream color but i have noticed that he does that a lot when he's just out in the sun i don't think he feels any differently hang with me and we're just going to go for a little sun walk i'm looking for them hawks because i know they're out there i just saw one over in another area where we're not thankfully so just gonna go with him so he can get nice and toasty. Get a little scenery. Sorry for the wind. But yeah. If you can do this, especially in the warmer months, and let them enjoy the outside and to get out of their their environment that they're in every day, and just to make life a little bit more enriched for them and it helps with bonding time. They get used to being in your hand, especially if they're new to your family or a smaller, more, more smaller, um, of course he's still a juvenile. We got three more months to go before he's gonna be fully grown, which is around one year. But yeah, the more that you do these type of bathing with them, sunbathing, holding them, letting them get used to just being in different environments in your hand. If you can actually feed them from your hand, that's gonna really help them grow and trust that you are someone trustworthy and that you're not gonna hurt them. And they become a little bit less skittish. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoy this video today. Look out for some more videos. We got some coming out that I've, I just have to edit. Um, one on breeding millworms, why millworms and superworms are good for your reptiles, as well as we have one coming out also of the anatomy and the benefits and kind of a pros and cons of dubia roaches. So make sure you guys like and subscribe this video. Um, so, I mean, subscribe to our channel, like this video especially if you want to see those other ones and check out our playlist. We have a lot of playlists already. It's been fun. Y'all have a blessed day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye for today.